When you're using a compressor, sometimes you can get an unwanted click at the start of your sound. So I've got this sine wave with a decay on track 1, and if I play it you can hear there are no clicks anywhere and the spectrum looks clean. But if I play the sine wave into this compressor, you can hear a click at the start. And you can also see a little bit of distortion in the spectrum. And you can also see the distortion in the waveform here at the start. But I can get rid of this pretty quickly by using look ahead. So this is a good solution for sounds that have a short attack. But if I increase the attack on my sound, you may still hear a bit of noise at the start of the sound if you listen really closely. And you may need to turn up your volume a little bit to really hear this. And if you look at the spectrum, you can see that we've still got some distortion. And you can also see that the start of the waveform is not perfectly smooth. So, this is a pretty specific situation, but if you're ever in a situation like this, where you've got a sound that's close to a sine wave with some attack, and you want to use really hard compression, it may be a good idea to try a compressor or a limiter with a look ahead that's a little more sophisticated, so you can really deal with all clicks and noises at the start of a sound. And in my opinion, Ableton's limiter does this pretty well. So let me play this into the limiter, and with a look ahead of 6 milliseconds, and you'll hear that there's no clicks or noises. And you can see the waveform looks clean, and the spectrum also looks pretty clean. So for this video I want to get into what causes these clicks and noises, and why look ahead helps you get rid of them. So in my last video titled How to Prevent Distortion in a Compressor, I explained how a compressor uses the input signal, to build an amplitude envelope, and then the amplitude envelope is used to build a gain envelope, which represents the compression that is applied to the input signal to give us the output signal. So this was the situation without any attack or release, and then I showed how some release can extend the compression to the places where the amplitude envelope is below the threshold, so that you end up with a pretty steady amount of compression across the entire wavelength, which means there's not a lot of distortion. But there is still a problem here that I haven't discussed yet, and that is this part right here. At the start of a sound, when the amplitude envelope hasn't passed the threshold yet, release doesn't do anything, because there's no compression that can be extended by release. And so you're always going to have this place where you have a bit of distortion. So this is where the click in a compressor comes from. We always start with no compression. But you can use some look ahead to deal with this. So the look ahead in Ableton's compressor is a pretty simple type of look ahead, and what it does is basically this. It delays the input signal after it has analyzed it to create the envelopes, and then it applies the compression after that delay. And doing this allows the compressor to react to the input before you can hear it, and that's why it's called look ahead. So another way to look at this is, look ahead moves the gain envelope a little more to the left, and now we've moved the problematic part of the gain envelope to a place before the sound, so you cannot hear it anymore. So let's see what this looks like in practice. So we use the sine wave with the short attack as the input, and then after the compressor with no look ahead, it looks like this. So what we have is this initial part where the sound does not go over the threshold, and so there's no compression here. But at some point we do go over the threshold, and suddenly we have compression. So this is essentially a bit of distortion, but because the distortion is so short, it sounds like a click. But if we use some look ahead, the sound looks like this. So we've moved that bit of distortion to the left, and so if you ever get in a situation like this, you only need a simple look ahead delay to take care of a click. However, the problem gets worse when I increase the attack on the input sound. So now, without look ahead, we get this. And as you can see, we have now spread the distortion out over a bunch of cycles. And that is because there will always be distortion until we've reached the peak amplitude, which is now over here. So even if the input passes the threshold before that point, 
which you can see it does several times. It doesn't pass the threshold far enough for release to give us enough compression when the input drops down again, because the input constantly gets louder. So now if I try to fix this by moving that distortion to the left with look ahead, you can see I can't move the distortion far enough out of the way because the start of the sound is now distorted. And there are ways to make the look ahead even longer, but a really long look ahead also has some downsides. For example, the fact that you are moving the distortion to the left of the sound doesn't always mean that it cannot be heard, because in some situations you may not have complete silence before this part, and so you may always hear that distortion somewhere. Also, the farther you move the gain envelope to the left, the more release you need to make sure the end of the sound over here also receives compression, like this. And on top of that, the more look ahead you use, the more latency you have. So the conclusion of all of this is that a simple look ahead delay can be a good solution for clicks and noises at the start of a sound, but it's not always the best solution, especially if you're trying to do really hard compression, which is basically the same thing as limiting. Luckily, a lot of limiters and also some compressors use a look ahead that's a little more sophisticated, and Ableton's limiter is one of them. So even in a sound with a lot of attack, the limiter's look ahead deals with distortion very easily. And you can see that the waveform looks smooth, and in the spectrum you can see that almost all distortion is now gone. So I don't really know that much more about how this type of look ahead works, so I won't go into detail on that, but I think at least it's important to know that there can be pretty big differences between compressors and limiters in terms of how they look ahead, and so my advice is to keep that in mind and to make sure that when you're trying out a compressor or a limiter, to pay extra attention to whether it uses look ahead and how well the look ahead does at preventing clicks and distortion. Okay, that's it for now, and I'll see you later.